Luke 23 verses 11 to 25. Then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. Then Pilate called together the leading priests and other religious leaders along with the people, and he announced his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence and find him innocent. Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has caused for nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty. So I'll have him flogged and then I will release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, Kill him and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he demanded, Why? What crime has he committed? I have found no reason to sentence him to death, so I will have him flogged and then I will release him. But the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. As they had requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. I'm reading John chapter 19 verses 16 to 20. So they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called Place of the Skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Hello, I'm Ali and I have come to tell you a Good Friday story and to tell you why Good Friday is good, why it is good news. And basically the reason is because God planned something amazing from before the beginning of time. Now I have to just get into my computer, there we go. Well, so the story I'm going to tell you from the Bible is the story of Barabbas. And here is Barabbas when he was a baby. He was very cute, wasn't he? Now, Barabbas was quite typical of a child in that he tried really hard to be good, but he didn't always get it right. Sometimes he used to sneak down to the marketplace and his favourite thing to do was to go and have a look at the markets and the apples and sneak one into his pocket and take it home to eat. He didn't pay for it. He went home and he'd run into the garden before his mum could see him. He'd go down to the bottom of the garden and climb up a tree and hide and eat his apple. And that would stop him from having to look after his little sister or do the washing up or other chores that his mum wanted him to do. Now, I wonder if you're a bit like Barabbas in that you try to do good things, but sometimes you get it wrong. The Bible says that we all fall short of what God's done, of what God wants. This is because God is perfect, his perfection, and anything that's below perfect falls short of what God wants. None of us are good enough for God. Well, let's see what happens to Barabbas when he grows up. Here he is. He doesn't look a very nice man, does he? And actually, he wasn't a very nice man. He became the leader of a gang of people. And he used to go and cause fights in the city of Jerusalem. And one day, he was involved in a riot. And during that riot, something horrible happened. A 
oh dear, it doesn't look very good, does it? In fact, it was so not good that he ended up here in prison. He's looking out of his cell window. He can't see anything but a wall. And he's beginning to wonder why he's there. He knows why he's there, but he's beginning to wonder what got him there. Because he realises that he was trying to be good. He was trying to do good things, but he kept failing. And he began to feel sorry for the things he'd done wrong. He began to feel sorry for the way he treated his mum and his sister. He felt sorry for the unkind things he'd say it to people. He felt sorry for the things he thought and things he did. And he definitely felt sorry for the fight that he'd just involved in and what had happened to that Roman soldier. He sat on the floor of his cell and he realised that he was sorry, but that he didn't know what to do to change. I wonder if you feel like that. Wonder whether you feel sorry for some of the things that you've done wrong, but you don't know what to do to change. Now, I told you that Good Friday is good because God had a plan from the very beginning. And God had a plan because he loved Barabbas, he loved you and he loved me. Barabbas heard a noise outside and he got up and he looked out of that window again and he couldn't see anything. He could see a wall and he could hear that behind the wall were some people. In fact, there was crowds and crowds of people and they were walking up away from where he could hear or see. But because there were so many of them, he, he really listened carefully. He suddenly heard that the crowd had fallen silent and there was a man talking, but he couldn't hear what the man was saying. And then suddenly the crowd started shouting again, Barabbas! 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 Barabbas thought, why are they shouting my name? Why are they shouting my name? And then he listened again and he could hear that man talking and he couldn't hear what the man was saying. He strained and strained and he couldn't hear. And then he heard the crowd shouting again, crucify him, crucify him. Barabbas thought, what? Oh my goodness, they're going to crucify me. They're going to kill me. But you know what? I deserve that for the things that I've done. I deserve to die. And he was sorry and he realised all of these things. It wasn't until the next morning that Barabbas heard anybody or saw anybody. And he heard the soldier coming along the corridor to his cell and he opened the door and the soldier said, stand up Barabbas. And Barabbas stood up and then the soldier pushed him out of the door and the light hit his eyes and, and Barabbas was, oh my goodness, it's daylight. What, what's going on? And then the door <laughs> slammed and Barabbas turned around. Well, there's no one there. Where's the soldier gone? And then he looked around him and the streets appeared to be empty. He thought, where is everybody? And then in the distance, he could see a crowd of people and they were going towards the city gate. And he started to follow them. He started to find out, he wanted to find out where they were going. And he, he followed them out of the city gate and to a hill. And on the hill, he saw this. He saw three crosses on a hill and he realised that he should have been on one of those crosses, but that someone else was there in his place. The Bible says that we deserve death for the things that we have done wrong, but on the cross, Jesus took the punishment on himself. Not just for Barabbas, 
He took Barabbas' place, but actually he took your place and my place as well. It wasn't just for him, it was for everybody. And the reason he did that was because it was God's plan from the very beginning of time that Jesus would do this for you and for me because he loves us. Wow. I'm going to show you this. This is me. This is me and this is the weight of my sin separating me from God. And Jesus comes. He hasn't got a weight of sin on him because he's perfect. And he can talk to God. He can commune with God. He can be God's friend. And there is no barrier se separating him because he is perfect. That's the only way that we can know God. But when Jesus went to the cross, he took the weight of sin on himself. So he made a way for us to know God and to be his friend. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, it says, Christ had no sin. He was perfect. But God made him become sin so that in Christ we could become right with God. So when Jesus took that weight of sin on himself, not just Barabbas' sin, but your sin and my sin as well, he gave us his righteousness, his right with Godness, which gave us the ability to know God and to be his friend. And God and Jesus had this plan from the very beginning of time because they love you. That's why Good Friday is good news.